world like a loose garment. Yes. And you, you don't get that job, that promotion you thought, you need to rejoice and jump up and down and say, God, thank you. You must have something better for me. Hallelujah. Don't get bent out of shape because uh, sometimes you think that's that's what you what that was actually what you wanted. Because see, I truly believe this. If it's for you, can't nobody take it from you. Amen. If God has opened that door, he swings it open wide and makes it obvious to you. You'll know it in your spirit. The other people will know it. And you can walk right through it. And if it slams shut, because sometimes I say, God, if it ain't meant to be, slam it. Amen. Amen. So I don't get confused or see, because you know, sometimes your flesh will get in the way. Because, you know, outwardly your flesh will desire, mm, that look good. Oh, I like that. But did you ask God? It may have been a good idea, but was it a God idea? Was that God where he had you to be? Or was that what your flesh says? Because your flesh a lot of times want to be real comfortable. But sometimes God will put you in a tight place. Well, it's not comfortable because he's still trying to work something out of you. All right. <laughs> so he can take you to the next level. So understand that. Just a little side note. That happens sometimes. You got a name in Amen. <laughs> so understand that. So don't get all bent out of shape when things do not necessarily go the way you think. But say, God, I'm glorifying you through this situation. God, I don't understand this, what you're taking me through. But God, through the process, Lord, I give you glory. I praise you, Lord. And sometimes I say, Lord, do it quickly because I'm, I'm having issues. Be honest. I, I don't know how much longer, Lord. But he said he does not give you more than what you can bear. Hallelujah. But be honest. And say, God, I'm having some pains here. I'm getting ready to get the slap on. No, I don't know. Five, four minutes you get is about to come out. And somebody's going to feel the pain. So help me, God. All of me is not saved. God, maybe God, but, you know... Lord, deal with my heart. Then, you know, being honest, God, deal with my heart. Amen. Deal with my heart, Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, many times we need to be honest and say, God, you know, go to the deeper parts. Because, you know, when you get saved, it's some areas you need to work on. Amen. Lord, deal with my mouth. I talk too much. I'm always getting in trouble because I'm saying something. Lord, teach me. Teach me your ways, Lord. What I need to speak, what I need to say, what I need to do, where I need to go. Have those kind of conversations with God. Because when you do, it'll help you stay in the fight. Because, again, there will be afflictions. And we will use that. But get as much word as you can about a situation. Well, I told someone, one of the best things you can do as a believer, you know the little book that has the precious Bible promises in it? Yes. Get one of those. And whenever it's some situation of things you've got going on, look in that and look for scriptures for that. You know, you're not in this alone. You need to build yourself up in your most high. So you need to know what the Word says about it. It's something for everything in there. And that's what you meditate on day and night. I remember one time years ago, I even made banners I put around my house to remind myself or something. Because, you know, I was, I was, I was in the fight. And I wanted to stay in the fight. So I had to continue to remind myself of that until I came out of that situation. And I'm going to tell you a thing of it is, God is always faithful. He's always on time. Because when he brings you out of it, or you go through it, because you know you've heard it, either you're um, in the fight, going in the fight, or in the midst of a trial, or you're coming out of it. Where are you right now in your life? Going through? In it? Or coming out of it? And, and that's always this, this, this part of the process of fight. But see, when you got on your whole armor of God, and you know you got Him there with you, you can endure almost anything. You 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 know you, you can you can do it because He loves and cares for us. He's He's on our side. He's in the battle. It's like the three Hebrew boys. You know, you have to remember yourself about that. He was in the fire with them, wasn't he? What makes you think he's not in the fire with you? He's, he's in the fire with us. He's there. You have to recognize that. And all you do is go back to the past things that have happened. If he brought you from this point, what makes you think he can't bring you to another point? It's not over with. So we have to learn to stay in the fight. Don't abort the mission or the dream. That's another thing. Because in the midst of the fight, a lot of times you want to walk away. <clears throat> okay, close the church. I, I'm not going to do this. Can't do this no more. The fight is too great. I, I'm just done. Stick a knife in me like a turkey. I'm done. 
<laughs> but you can't do that. See, that's what the devil wants to do. Because see, I'm going to tell you another little side, Cleve. When you know that you keep, when you're, when you're doing the right thing, oh my God, does he come. He'll even come where your giftings, wherever that is, he'll even come with that and try and tell you, oh, you ain't, you are out of gift as, as, as what you say you are. Oh, you, you're not this. In that particular area where you know God is called, he'll tell you, oh, you, mm-mm. That, that's how the enemy does. Because, see, he doesn't want to see you go forth and be successful because he already know. But if you get this and get the revelation of this, you get illuminated, oh, my God, he's really scared. He knows it's all over. It's all she wrote. It's all she wrote. So he wants to try and discourage you and to get you to get out the fight. To give up. To call it quits. Not only ministry, but in relationships. He wants you to call it quits. He wants you to, to destroy your marriage. He wants you to uh, walk away from a bit, whatever thing you have that you've established. Because I'm telling you, and that's the worst thing you could do. You know why? Because you can't go someplace else and think it's going to be someplace, it's going to be different. Because everything is a fight. No matter who you with, it's going to be a fight. Amen. Is, but if you already invested so much, you know at least what you up against over here. So why would you run over here to a new thing and start all over again? That's suicide. And especially when you get a certain age in your life. You ain't got time to be doing all that. Going through all them confusion, starting all over again, rebuilding. I got this little joke where I be telling about my husband. And you know, I'm part of my testimony, unfortunately. We've both been married a couple of times. You know, him a little bit more than me. But anyway. <laughs> and I said, well, well, you know, it's the truth tell. And that's another thing. I got to tell the truth and shame the devil. Because see, you can't come against me and embarrass me whatever. Because I'm going to tell it before he tells it. Amen. Amen. That's another thing. But you know, and I said, um, and, and I don't know, another little sign. You guys know I wrote a book. And hopefully and prayerfully, it will be out this year. But it's about relationships. And I said, one thing that, you know, bugs me is the fact that, you know, you really need to know God and have a vision and plan for your life so you can be with one person for the rest of your life and understand that and walk together with God in oneness because you don't want to keep jumping from pill to post from one relationship and thinking it's going to be different because it's not. You got to settle down and work it out with this person because all you do is waste your time and your talent because I told them all that stuff you gave to them other folks should have been mine. <laughs> You can imagine the rock I could have had on my finger with all the ones you done bought for other people. Amen. The house I could have been living in. All right. With the resources you done wasted on somebody else. So that's what I said. Just be diligent and stay in the fight for what you have. Amen. And ask God to help you work that out. See? I'm not talking about. I said, you know what? I really could have had. Not to say God has not blessed us now, but you know what? And so I do that now with other people when I counsel them and saying, you know, you don't want to do that. This is a waste of time. Stay in the fight and ask God to help you to work it out through whatever you have here. Don't run off to something else. All right. Because, you know, then not only the resources, but just, you know, dealing with another person, all those things. Yeah. You know, when you, the grass always looks greener on the other side. But I'm going to tell you, yeah, you know how you always. stand, you be on the other side of the street and you look at somebody's yard. Oh, they got a nice yard. But I tell you what, if you walk across that street and look down close, you will see some crab grass. That's right. And some weeds. It ain't as perfect as you thought it was. That's now, from a distance, yeah. it looks like that. But if you get up close, well, that's how people are. Till you really get in there and you start seeing, oh my God, <laughs> this is not what I thought it was. Because we all come with issues. Amen. We all come with problems. Amen. So, where you are, stay in the fight. Amen. So, have a vision, have a plan, and don't abort it and don't stop it. Because as I said before, life is like that. And, and just another side note about the relationship with a book. I talk about relationships with a person and let's say, you know, people who are desiring mates or to be married, don't walk in it with somebody who don't have a vision. Amen. Don't have a purpose. Amen. Wouldn't do it. Because that's the problem with so many people. Why it's so easy for them to walk away. Most people I find are very unhappy in themselves. You know why they're unhappy with their relationship? 
They're happy with their sales, first of all. They're unhappy with their job choices. Because many times what people do with jobs, what do we do? We get a job because we need to pay bills. But we don't have a vision for that particular career or occupation or whatever we're doing. I mean, I don't know. I have a lot of people who my first thing they want to say, oh, I want to be a bus driver or... I want to, ooh, give her kids go to, I want to be a bus driver. I want to work at McDonald's the rest of my life. You know, some things are temporal, right? And somebody got to do it. And some people, I'm not saying don't enjoy that. I'm not putting it down. But a lot of times people get in those kind of jobs. Oh, I want to be a mail carrier. I want to walk through the snow and dogs chasing after me to deliver the mail. No. Why people have many times jobs that they choose like this is because they see the dollar bill. See, the money that it provides and the stability, maybe, because, you know, supposedly it's a good job, whatever, but they really don't like it. And they're unhappy. And they got to get up and do this every day. So that unhappiness has a root in it that carries over to other areas of their lives. So then they're miserable in that. So then they become a lot of times miserable at home. And they're miserable with their mates because they're not being fulfilled in life. They don't have a real vision. And that's one thing I say about young people. Get a vision for yourself. Get a plan and do that that you know that you're going to enjoy, that you want. It makes you a better person. It makes you a, people able to live with you better. Because when you're happy, you make other people happy because you're not miserable. You're not just going through the motion. So, always have a vision and plan and don't abort the mission because things happen. Stay the course. You know what I mean? If you got to go to school, you got to get some training, whatever. But do that because it's not always about the dollar bill. Because I'm going to tell you, when you're happy doing what God has called you to do, you have a peace about yourself and God will make a way for the provisions. He'll do it. You know, I can testify this supernaturally. Um, Recently, and it's another little side note that God has brought in my spirit I need to share with you about. I, as I told you before, I'm making a transition where I'm going to be ministering full time because that's what my passion is. My passion is not where I'm working at or where I have been. And God says, and I've actually got officially maybe four more years before I can officially retire. And I was kind of debating, should I maybe just stay the four years out to get the four? And God said, you mean to tell me you would stay there another four years for that little penny ante pension and not trust me? I know you didn't say that. <laughs> so, okay, God, just, just joking. Just, just, just throw it out there. Because I clearly know that's what he said. And my husband even confirmed it in a word that, that I would be leaving. And so, you know, I was still pondering that about how this is going to work out. So I was, I, I, the job I have, I go out in the field and I, and I see individuals. And I had to go see this particular person. Um, and I went to this real estate office. In this very exclusive area in outside Orlando, it's called Winter Park. And when I was there, this lady, um, about my age, very well dressed, and she's a real she owns a real estate office. And so I come in, I discuss with her the business I got to talk to her about, and she says to me, "Well, how long have you been doing this?" I said, "Well, I've only been doing this maybe about a year and a half as a revenue officer." I said, "But I've been with the service now maybe about twenty some years." She said, "Oh," I said, "Well, how long have you been doing this?" And she said, "About the same length of time or whatever." But this is what she said right out of her mouth: "I love my job." Oh, loud like that, and I went like. I said, God. And I started thinking to myself, I don't love mine. I hate my job. I'm thinking to myself. Which I thought, I mean, honest, I don't like what I do. So, um, she went on talking and stuff. And, and it just came out. My mother said, you know what I really want to do? I said, my husband, I pastor a church in Claremont. And I want to minister full time. And that's what she said. So, she said, oh, that's nice. So, we went on talking. I was almost in her office about an hour. So, after we got our business taken care of. And she told me how great her business was. And how she was doing everything. Before I left, you know what she said to me? I wish you well in your ministry. Now, why would she remember that or think about that? After as long as I've been in her office to do that. And once again, this was God speaking to me. I said, okay, God, I, 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 I get it, I get it. So right after I left her, I went to another client. So I go to this other business, and actually it's a university in Florida called Full Sail University. Even the name itself tells you something. Anybody heard of Full Sail? Full Sail University. And they're very progressive in the type of stuff that they teach at this particular university. Not just the ordinary thing. They do a lot of high-tech graphic things they do there and computer imagery and whatever they teach people. So I went there and I went on the second floor, and it's, and it's, it's beautiful on the inside because it's very contemporary, the styling. And I talked 
talked to the lady on the phone at the reception desk. She says, well, the person you want to speak to is not here, but I'll come get you and bring you back to my office, and you can call him on the phone, and he'll give you permission.